Is Obama's victory ours? With the attainment of the required delegates to claim the Democratic Party's nomination for U.S. President, Senator Barack Obama has written a new page in American history. For by so doing, he succeeds where Channing Phillips, Shirley Chisholm, Jesse Jackson Sr., and Al Sharpton could not, by gaining the necessary delegates to demand nomination. Of course, there have been numerous black candidates for president, but these have been third-party efforts designed more to raise issues, to organize, or to protest than to actually win elections. Some of the best known have been Eldridge Cleaver, former Black Panther Minister of Information, Dick Gregory, Dr. Lenora Filani, and the former Congresswoman, Cynthia McKinney. But this is a different kettle of fish, for Obama's candidacy is the closest to make it to the winner's circle. What also distinguishes Obama from his less successful predecessors is he doesn't come from the civil rights, black liberation, socialist, or anti-war movements. Indeed, although his detractors may try to paint him as a leftist liberal, this is hardly true. On issues both domestic and foreign, he would have been more at home in the Republican Party of his black senatorial predecessor, Edward Brooke of Massachusetts. For though he is black by dint of his African father, he has studiously avoided black political groups in his long, harrowing climb to the rim of the White House. He has studiously avoided the very real and long-standing grievances of black America. In fact, he tried to run a post-racial campaign until Senator Hillary Clinton and her rambunctious husband, former President Bill, brought race front and center during the Super Tuesday primaries of February by trying to pigeonhole him as, quote, the black candidate, unquote. The primary wounded Obama, and as he won in the delegate count, he also lost a number of primary states, such as Ohio and Pennsylvania, that are necessary for a win in November. Politics is the art of making the people believe they're in power when, in fact, they have none. It is a measure of how dire is the hour that they've passed the keys to the kingdom to a black man. As in many American states, black mayors were let in when the treasuries were almost bare and tax bases were almost gone. With the nation's manufacturing base almost a thing of history, amidst the socio-economic wreckage of globalization, with foreign affairs in shambles, the rulers reach for a pretty brown face to front the empire. Real change that you could believe in would be an end to empire and an end to wars for corporate greed, not just a change in the shade of the political managers. That change, I'm afraid, is still to come. From death row, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are produced by Noel Hanrahan for Prison Radio. Is Obama's victory ours?